The Cube presents Dell Technologies World, brought to you by Dell. Hello and welcome to the Cube here at Dell Tech World. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube with Dave Vellante, here with Michael Dell, the CEO of Dell Technologies. Cube alumni comes on every year. We have the Cube here. It's been two years. Michael, welcome to the Cube. Good to see you. Hey, John, Dave. Great to be with you guys. Thanks for being here. Wonderful to be back here in Vegas with you. Well, great to be in person. Two years ago, we had the Cube with the pandemic. A lot's happened. We were talking end-to-end -end solutions here at Dell Tech World in person two years ago. Pandemic hits, thank God you had all that supply for the, for the people having the remote, remote in to work. Now back in person, what's it look like now with, with Dell Tech World end-to-end? -end? The edge is important, what's the story? You know, edge is, is the physical world and if you, if you step back from clouds and you know, multi-cloud, you sort of think about what is the purpose of a cloud or a data center? Well, it's to take data out of the physical world and move it to this place to somehow enhance it or do something with it and create business value and hopefully create better outcomes. Well, it turns out that, you know, increasingly a lot of that data is going to stay in the physical world. And all of those nodes are going to be connected, they're going to be intelligent, and we're seeing it in manufacturing, in retail, in healthcare, transportation and logistics, we're seeing this rapidly intelligent edge being formed. And then of course with the new networks, the 5G, we're seeing you know, all, all this develop. And so here on the show floor, we're showing a lot of those solutions, but our customers are, are highly engaged and certainly we think that's a, a big, a big growth vector for the next decade. You know, it's been interesting to watch the transformation of the IT world and cloudification, and the as a service uh, consumption model, which you guys are putting out there, has been very successful. But cloud operations is more prominent now on premises and edge and cloud. So the combination of cloud, on premise, and edge, hardware matters more now than ever before. Silicon advances, um, abstraction layers for modern cloud native applications are what people are focused on. What's the story that you say to the CIOs saying, we're here to help you with that new architecture, cloud, multi-cloud, on-premise, and edge. What's the main story for you guys, for the customers? Well, you know, customers want to go faster, right? <laughs> and they want to accelerate their transformation. And so they want to shift more resources over to developers, to applications, to access their data to create competitive advantage. And so we talk a lot about the value line and what are those things below the value line where we can provide that as a service on a consumption-based model and accelerate their transformation and kind of you know, do for them what we've done inside our own business and you know, it's absolutely resonating. We're seeing great growth there. People continue to, to need the solutions, but as we can automate the management and deployment of infrastructure, and make it super easy, it gives them a lot of cycles back. You know, Michael, my, the favorite part, my favorite part of your book was you were in, I think you were in his, in his home court in his dining room at Carl Icahn's house, and you said, well, why don't you just buy the company and then you'll do what you're doing, I'll buy it back for cheaper. Now, thankfully, you didn't have to do that because you had an environment <laughs> of low interest rates and you obviously took it into the other direction. Added tremendous value, $101 billion in revenue last year, 17% revenue growth, which was astounding when you think about that. Um, now we're entering a new chapter with VMware untethered. Of course, you're the chairman of both companies, so how should <laughs> we think about the new Dell? What's next? Well, so look, we, we have some unbelievable core businesses, right? We have our client system business, and we've all learned during these last two years how incredibly important it is to enable and empower your workforce with the right tools in the remote and hybrid work, and we're showing off all kinds of new innovations here. That's a huge business for us, continues to grow, continues to be super important. Then we have our ISG, the cloud data center, the network of the future, the edge, you know, the, the sort of epicenter of where we're embracing consumption-based business models. That's absolutely huge. Then we have these new businesses that we're building with telco, with edge. Put it all together, it's a $1.3 trillion TAM that we operate in, as you said, more than $100 billion last year, so there's plenty of room for us to continue to grow and, and expand, and you know, as we make this shift to outcomes, it's obviously more valuable for customers, and that you know, increases our opportunity, increases the, the value we can create for all our stakeholders. And number one, number one share in PCs, by the way, congratulations. Again, hit that milestone. All of our gamer 
uh, fans in our Discord want to know what's the hottest chips coming, what's the fastest machines, um, what, how's the monitors coming, they want faster, cheaper, what's the coolest uh, monitors out there right now and, and machines? Well, uh, you know, what, what's, what's amazing is the, the pace of innovation continues to improve, so whether it's in the GPU, the CPU, the, the resolution, I, I'm pretty partial to our 41 inch uh, <laughs> display, 11 million pixels of fun, and look, I mean, we, we, it's, it's, it's clear that people are more productive when they have large screens, and all the performance is enabling photorealistic uh, you know, uh, gaming and photorealistic everything, and these are immersive experiences. And you know, again, uh, what companies have figured out to bring it back to, to, to a little bit of business here, John, is that when you uh, give people the right tools, they're more productive, they're more engaged, and look, people are smart. Yeah. They know what tools are available, and you know, uh, the thing that actually is most representative of how a person thinks about the tools they have at their organization is actually the thing that's right in front of them. And so, you know, this ability for us to provide a full set of solutions for organizations to keep their workforce pr productive, to run their applications and infrastructure securely anywhere they want, that's, that's a winning proposition. <laughs> Michael, trust was a big theme of your keynote yesterday, and when you acquired EMC and got VMware, it really changed the dynamic with regard to your ability to go into new parts of organizations. You became a much more strategic supplier, I, I would argue. And now, with VMware as a separate company, do you feel like you have built up over the you know, five or whatever years that muscle memory, you kind of earned that trust. So how do you see the customer relationship with that re regard to that integration that they, they loved? The ecosystem competitors might not have loved it so much, but the <laughs> customers, really did love it. In fact, the, the USAA gentleman yesterday kind of mentioned that. H how do you see it? You know, customers uh, are not as interested in the balance sheet and what, you know, wh where different holdings are. What they, they want things to work together, right? <laughs> and they want partnerships in ecosystems. And certainly, you know, with VMware, even before the combination, we had a powerful partnership. It obviously solidified in a super special way. And now we have this first and best relationship and I've remained the chairman of VMware and super excited about their future. But our ecosystem is incredibly broad. You see that here in the show floor. And again, making things work together better and more effectively, building these engineered solutions that allow people to very quickly deploy the kind of capabilities they want, whether it's you know, Snowflake now working with the on-premise and the edge data, and more of these you know, multi-cloud uh, ecosystems that are being built, it's not going to be just one company. You called the edge a couple of years ago, you really prominent in your, in your speeches and your keynotes, Data also was a big theme, you mentioned data. Now data engineering seems to be the hottest track of, of, of students graduating with data engineering skills. Not data science, data engineering, large scale data as code concepts. So what's your vision now with data? How's that fitting into the solutions and the role of data, obviously data protection with cybersecurity? Data as code is becoming really part of that next big thing. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look at anything that is interesting in the world today, uh, at the center of it is data, right? Whether it's the blockchain or the DeFi or the AI drug discovery or the autonomous vehicles or whatever you want to do, there's data in, in, in the middle of that. And of course, with that data, well, you've got to manage it, you, you need compute engines, right? You need to be able to protect it, secure it, and you know, that's kind of what we do. And we're not going to create all of those solutions, but we are going to be an enabling layer to allow that data to be accessed no matter you know, where, where it is. And, and, and of course, you know, leading in storage continues to be a super important part of our business. Number one, larger than number two, then number three, <laughs> number four combined, and, and most of number five as well, and, and growing share. And, and you saw today the software-defined innovations, allowing that you know, data layer to exist across the edge, the colos, the on-prem, and the public clouds. You threw out a stat yesterday, I can't remember, it was a keynote of the analyst round table, but it was nine million cell towers, and if I heard right, you kind of look at those as potential data centers. 
Talk That's about right. That it's, it's actually seven million, seven but million. but it probably will be nine million, and not not too long. I, I I don't have the update, but so yeah, the public clouds all together is about six hundred data centers. There are about seven million cellular base stations in the world. Every single one of those is becoming a you know multi-access edge compute node. And what are they putting in there? They're putting mini data centers with compute and GPUs and storage. And you know, 5G is not about uh, connecting people. That was 4G and before. 5G is about connecting things. And there are way more things than there are people. Right? And uh, you know, this 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 edge is is rapidly developing. You'll also have private 5G, and you'll have. You know, again, embedded intelligence, I believe, is going to be in everything. This next decade is going to be about that intelligent, connected future, taking that data, turning it into useful outsights, in insights and outcomes, and you know, lots of new businesses will be created, existing businesses will be transformed yeah. and also disrupted. Yeah, I mean, I think that's so right on, and not to pat ourselves on the back day, but we called that edge distributed computing a couple years ago on theCUBE, and that's what's turning into. The home with COVID, you saw that become a workplace, basically, compute center, these compute nodes. Tying it together is what everyone's talking about right now. So, as customers say, okay, I want to keep my operations steady, steady and secure, how do I glue it together? How do I bring these compute nodes together? That seems to be the top question on, on top of people's minds, and they want it to be cloud native, which means they want it to run cloud-like, and they want to connect these compute nodes together. That's a big discussion point. What's your view on that? Well, you know, if you, if you sort of have a, a cloud here, a cloud there, a cloud everywhere, and you, you know, have lots of different Kubernetes frameworks, uh, and you've got, you know, everything is, is spread out, it, it's a disaster, right? And, and, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real challenge to manage all that. So what people are trying to do is create ruthless, standardization. It's like, how do you drive cost out and get speed? It's ruthless standardization. Create consistent environments where you can operate things across all the different domains that, that you want. And so, uh, you know, this is what we're bringing together in, in, in the capabilities that we're delivering. Yeah, that chaos is a great opportunity for you. Um, how are you feeling about VMware these days? New team, uh, give us the update there. Yeah, the team is doing well. You know, I think the Tanzu message is resonating. You know, people want Kubernetes and, and, and container-based apps, for sure. That's the main you know, growth in, 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 new, in new workloads. Uh, but they also want it to work with what they have. Yeah. And they don't want it to be locked into one particular infrastructure. So software defining everything, making it run in all the public clouds, you know, we've had a great success with VxRail. You know, that, that absolutely continues. We have uh, 200,000 plus nodes, 15,000 customers and growing. We have edge satellite nodes. And we continue to work together in SD-WAN, in software-defined networking, in VMware Cloud Foundation, uh, you know, expressed uh, in, in, in all locations. You know, one of the things that we've been seeing with the trend towards um, future of work, which is a big theme here, is a lot of managed services are popping up where the complexity is so high that customers want to manage services. Uh, and also the workforce of IT's kind of changing. You got a younger generation coming in. How do you see that future of work, the workforce? The next level IT is not going to be like yesterday's IT. It's going to be distributed computing, dashboard based, and then you've got these managed services, you don't need to have the training and expertise maybe to run something at scale. How do, how do you see that connecting? Because that seems to be another big trend people are talking about. Hey, it's complex, someone manage it for me, and I want ease of use, I want the easy button in IT. Yeah, well, we, we've all been at this a while, so we can remember <laughs> you know, the beginnings of converged infrastructure and then hyper-converged, which wasn't that long ago, and now we have consumption-based business models. These are all along the trajectory of the easy button that you're talking about, and customers really thinking about the value line. Where are the things that really differentiate and add value for their business? And it's not below the value line in those infrastructure areas. So we're creating that easy button with appliances, with consumption-based models, and allowing them to deploy the scarce resources they have to the things that really drive their unique differentiation. And, you know, 
if you look at our managed services, flex on demand, all the sort of ancestors and predecessors of Apex, those have been great businesses for us. And now with Apex, we're kind of industrializing this and, and making it you know, at scale for all customers. You know, the three of us, we go back, we, we, our first interactions with you separately were in the 90s, and then we reconnected in the, uh, 2012, I think it was, Tarkin Maynard had a little breakout session with CIOs. You brought us to early on a Dell Tech world in Austin, and of course. It was, it was just Dell World then. Dell World, yeah, we sorry, had Dell, Dell Tech World. world. Yeah, thank right, you. Right. And then EMC World in 2010 was yeah. our first cube, and now that's all come together here in Las Vegas, so you know, it's been great uh, yeah. to see the three of us come together, and so really appreciate that. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely, awesome. well, you know, really appreciate you guys being here, the wonderful work you do in, thank you. in you know, bringing out the, the, the stories and, and showing off, helping us show off the innovations that you know, our team has been working on you know, during the past year. It's been great conversations, and, and on a personal note, it's been great to have uh, chats with all the top people in your company, appreciate it. Um, someone told me to ask you this question I want to ask you. you. We've all seen waves of innovation, cycles up and down. We're kind of on one now, you're seeing an inflection point, this next gen uh, computing and, and Web3, cultural shift with workforces and distributed computing decentralization, you mentioned that DeFi earlier. How do you see this wave coming? We've seen cycles come and go, dot-com bubble kind of looks the same as the Web3 NFTs and stuff now. It seems to be a little different, but how do you see this next wave? Because looking back on all the other ones that you, you've lived through and you wrote. Well, so, you know, the, the way I see it is, is uh, so, to some extent, these are like foundational layers that have to be built for the next phase to occur. And if you look at the sort of new companies that are being founded today, and we see a lot of those, you, you, you see them, we invest in a bunch of them, you know, they're, they're not going in and kind of redoing the old foundational layers. They're going deeply into vertical businesses and, and disrupting and adding value on top of those. And I think that's, that's really the, the, the point of, of technology, right? It's enabling human progress in, in all fields, it's making us healthier, it's making us safer, it's making us more successful in everything that, that we as humans do. And so all these layers of technology are enabling further progress. And I think it's absolutely going to continue. It's all been super exciting yeah. you know, so far for the first several decades, but as I, as I believe, it, it's, it's just a pre-game show. And it's clear your strategy is, is, is really building that foundation a layer, hardening it, but making it flexible enough. Anybody who read your book, it's, you're a technology visionary. A lot of people put you in a you know, finance bucket, but you can, you can see that you can connect the dots, and that's what you're doing with your foundation of layers. You're, that's where you're making the bets, isn't it? Uh, you don't, can't predict the future, you've said that many times, but you can sort of see where it's going and be prepared for it. Well, you, 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 know, you think about any company in, in the industry or any public sector organization, right? Uh, they're, they're, they're wanting to evolve more quickly and transform more, quick, more quickly, right? And we can give them an infrastructure, a set of tools, a set of capabilities to help them go faster. Yeah, and the other one thing, in the 80s when you started Dell and we were in college, there was no open source really then. And look at the growth of open source, talk about those layers. Open source, better silicon, GPUs, faster, cheaper, and now, more. And now we even have uh, open source instruction sets for processors, so yep. I mean the whole world's changing, yep. it's exciting, you have people around the world working together, I mean when you see our development teams, uh, whether they're in Israel or Ireland or Bangalore or Singapore, Hoppington, yep. Austin, Silicon Valley, you know, Taiwan, they're, they're, all, they're all collaborating together and you know, driving, driving innovation. And, and, and our business is not that dissimilar from our customers. <laughs> Michael, great to have you on theCUBE. Great to have a physical event. People are excited. I'm talking to people. Hey, I haven't been back in Vegas in two years. Thanks for having this event. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank Mike. you guys. Michael Dell here on theCUBE, CEO of Dell Technologies. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back more. Live coverage here at Dell Tech World. <laughs>